Brian Currin mie bat ziren da berrogeita margarren urtean jaio zen Ego Afrikan. Abokatu ikasketak egin ostean, bere herrialdeko giza eskubideen borrokalari sutsua izan da. Bein demokrazia lortuta, etxaizarrekin berradizkidetu eta eserri lankan, Ruandan, ekialde urbilean eta ipar Irlandan urte luzez egin zuen lan. Orain, Euskal Herria du erronka. I wasn't acutely aware of the racial issues, obviously, in my early years, but uh, I certainly was very strongly aware of the divide between the Afrikaner nationalists and the rest. I became fairly political at university, started the first branch of the Progressive Party, which was a left-wing white party in South Africa. I was young, I was idealistic, I was ready to take on the world. And I didn't for one moment believe that uh, when I did it, that I would, that anything would happen to me. But obviously, during the course of doing that work, things did change. And eventually, I was under constant death threat. Um, there were people that came to our home. Uh, shots were fired at my house. My wife got threats. My children, through my wife and through me, got threats that they would be kidnapped. Uh, I arranged a private security guard and we lived under very difficult circumstances uh, through the late 80s. Friends of mine were assassinated, clients of mine were assassinated. Um, so it was a difficult time and I must tell you that at that stage I did think that there was a chance that it would happen to me. Um, and what I did was I went to gym three or four times a week I got as fit and as strong as I could so that if some if I did get shot or whatever I would have a better chance of surviving that sort of was in my mind a unique person he is a he is a real great leader in every sense of the word um, he is one in a century maybe one in more than one century uh, he just has the all the characteristics that one needs in a person to lead uh, and a person whose leadership you instinctively choose to follow not because he tells you I am your leader follow me it's because you want to follow him uh, because he is so inspirational and there were many many people within the ANC that were opposed to that the late 80s, early 90s, those who were the hawks, the hardliners, realized that in fact there was only one alternative for South Africa and that was a peaceful negotiation. And that if we continued with the struggle and the violence and the killings, that the country would be destroyed for everyone. Both sides have to come to the realization that there is no better alternative than a negotiated one. When Mandela came out of prison, um, he was such a force and such a personality and such a statesman and so respected and such a wonderful leader that people in MK who had their reservations really, I think, were willing to put their trust in his leadership. There was a time that he went to KwaZulu-Natal and he made that very famous speech to thousands and thousands of supporters and they were Zulu supporters of the ANC. And he said to them, take your spears, take your assegais, take your guns and throw them into the sea. And there were people in that crowd who booed him. And he then challenged them. And he insisted that the only way forward was peace. Corruption that is happening, uh, which is totally unacceptable and it's dangerous for the development of the country. Um, I think that many leading activists have become politicians, many that have got jobs within, within government uh, are abusing their positions. I'm not happy with the uh, delivery that we get, uh, the public service delivery, education, has not delivered what it should have delivered. Health services are very poor. Um, the majority of our people uh, do not get the health, health services that, that they are entitled to. Same with education. I think that uh, policing could be, could be far better. Uh, 
housing, quality of housing has been poor, that there is a big divide still between black and white South Africans. We are still not a fully integrated single nation in that sense. And it's going to probably take another 50 years for people to think uh, as one. And it's been wonderful to see the way white South Africans have come to this event fully supportive, wearing the yellow jersey, going to the games, and just celebrating what up until recently was seen as a black sport in South Africa. Black South Africans have looked at that, I know, because I've spoken to many and said, this reflects a change of attitude and we appreciate that and we want to embrace that. Where there has been some progress in trust is between Abitsala left and other nationalist parties in the Basque region. Slowly I see a little bit of trust developing there. And also, from what I read and my own meetings, I think that there is a little bit of trust that might be developing between certain leaders within the Socialist Party in the Basque Country and Abatsala left. So this initiative is definitely helping to slowly build that essential ingredient of trust. I think there are good reasons to be hopeful um, and optimistic. I think that Abatsala left have matured, they've grown, they understand the implications of the political strategy that they had previously. They know that their new approach um, is one that can work and I believe they are committed to that new approach. I don't believe they're ever going to go back on that new approach. Uh, I think that the leadership has shifted from the military to the political side and that is important. I think that the momentum is there and I'm confident that it will continue.